Bird Song by Julie Flett. Spring. It's a mucky spring morning as we pack up the last of our belongings and leave our little home in the city by the sea. I'm going to miss my friends and cousins and aunties and uncles. I'm going to miss my bedroom window and the tree outside. Goodbye, tree friend, I whisper. We drive through the country and over the mountains, alongside rivers and fields of horses. We stop to see a lone coyote crossing the road. Our new home sits on a hill overlooking a field, and past it another home. In that home lives an older woman named Agnes. The field is covered in snowdrops. Our new home has two trees outside and creaky stairs inside. My new room has a shelf for books and pictures and a desk for drawing, but I don't feel like drawing. My hands are cold. My mom and I bundle up under the covers in our new home in the country, far from the sea. Summer. Our new home hums with peeps and whistles and ribbits and chirps. I watch Agnes, our neighbor, working on something in her yard. Why don't you visit her, Katerina, my mom says. I nod. Okay. I take our dog, Oho, with me. Oho means owl in Cree. Hello, Agnes, I say. You must be Katerina, she says. Woof, Oho barks. Your mom has told me all about you, Agnes says. She says you love to draw. I do. Agnes loves to make things out of clay. She shows us around her yard. There are berries and flowers and so many of her clay things. They look like the branches and the birds and the flowers. Visit me again soon, Katerina, Agnes says with a smile. I smile back and give her a big wave. I can't wait to go home and start drawing. Fall. I do visit Agnes again. And again. And again. Agnes digs in her garden. I help by gathering extra leaves that'll get mixed into the soil. The worms love this. It's getting cold and windy and creaky. Agnes says she's getting creaky too. Would you like to see what I'm working on, Katerina, she asks. I'd like that, I say. Agnes is working on a pot that's round and bright. She tells me about waxing and waning moons. I tell her about Cree seasons. This month is called Pimihau Pisum, the migrating moon. Here comes the moon and two shiny seagulls. And there go the geese. Winter. It's Oho's first snow. We toboggan until my snowsuit is soggy and Oho is covered in tiny snowballs. After, we warm up with mom by the fire and then help her finish making salmon stew to share with Agnes. Agnes hasn't been out as much and needs a little help over the winter. She likes the salmon stew. Her daughter, who has come to stay for a while, likes it too. Agnes sends me home with a cup full of bulbs, snowdrop bulbs to plant in the field next autumn. They look like tiny moons. They give me more ideas for pictures. My fingers itch in my mittens. Spring. Agnes has grown weaker over the winter. Still, from her bed, we can hear the spring birds singing their songs and the tickle of the branches against her window. We listen to the sounds together. The snowdrops are peeking out. I wish Agnes could see them. I have an idea. 
I run home and gather up all my drawings. Agnes' daughter meets me at the door, and we take two ladders from the closet. When we're done, Agnes says it's like a poem for her heart. Then I sit with Agnes and talk about making things, mucky things, and things with string and song and paper and words. And then we sit quietly together on Agnes's bed until it's time to say goodbye. I leave with an ache in my heart, but I'm so glad to know my friend Agnes. Hello, Mom. Hello, Oho. Hello, home with two trees and creaky stairs. Later that night, I yiki pisum, the frog moon is full. My mom and I bundle up together in our home. My hands feel warm and the covers feel soft. And I think of my friend until I fall asleep.